So I'm going to start this off with, uh, this is a picture I just got off, off of Wiki uh, Commons. It's a um, picture free for public domain, so it can be used for this purpose. So uh, I'm going to show the information of the picture first to just give you an idea of what we're working with. This is a 3.3 megapixels. That size is how much it takes on disks. 5,210 by uh, 3,500. It's just over 18 uh, million pixels. So it's 18 megapixels. Uh, it's not the same as megabytes. Bytes is uh, 8 uh, at least. Uh, so. And not to get into too far into the computer aspect of it, but this is a so it's a fairly large uh, picture. Uh, so it'd be like an 18 megapixel camera or 20 megapixel camera. And he had the uh, settings all set up over in the background here. Uh, you would see in the far distance, I'd be to infinity uh, for the aperture. So it's a very small aperture, and it looks like here is just like about a few meters. So he's got a fairly large f stop. You can probably get more of that information off of the picture itself. Um, so back here, I have a little section just marked off, and it's showing uh, uh, a pedestrian just walking down the street. It's very hard to see right from here, but you know what? Might depends on the monitor too. But this, uh, if we just move this forward into the foreground. I'm just zooming in. I'm about 215% uh, of the picture right now. Now, this you can you can you can enlarge pictures and just blow them up this way, and they, they're they're a little bit grainy, but it's not too bad. It's it's when you go over the the threshold. Usually, it shouldn't be over 125, right? That's what they suggest. Uh, but cameras are so much better now, especially like this one, 18 megapixels. You can uh, zoom in quite a bit, and it gives you an idea of the size and the scope of the picture. It is big, of how much it's covering. This is like a poster size, right? And over the sides here, I'll show you that in a bit. But we're going to zoom in on this pedestrian here. And uh, she's walking there, and uh, you can see it's a nice sunny day. The shadows, she's in the shadow herself, so it's kind of hard to see her. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to zoom on back out. So we're at uh, on on 520%. That's about roughly five times zoom, so five times uh, closer. Um, now, if I set it back to about 100%, I don't know why this program won't let me go to 100%, but sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. My wheel novel might not be hitting it right, so. There we go. So anyways, this is a, uh, that picture there, zoomed in at 10 times. So this is what the picture itself looks like. Uh, 10 times here in the foreground, right? But the, back there, you can't really see that much detail. Uh, she's pretty small, so this is this is 10 times here. Zoom. And if we take, uh, well, this is a difference. So this is the size it actually is, and this is it zoomed 10 times, right? So as you can see, all these. Now, this one is the. Uh, uh, your pixel, right? And your pixel here is a, a program I'm using when I when I manipulated this uh, uh, the pixels. I uh, resampled, right? So you you resample the pictures, and that's what they're talking about. Uh, what his programming was doing. Uh, I've done it all different ways and showing you an example of how they would have done this and what the event would have been. Now the one on the left is just a uh, zoom pixel, so I didn't do anything but zoom in on the picture. Uh, didn't do any manipulation really, and I just added that 20% brightness and contrast. So if I bring this to about 100% right there, that's what it actually would look like. So it's uh, after it's been manipulated in the background there. And here's a 10 times zoom on the uh, smarter size, on the smart size. And so the pixel resize, it duplicates or removes pixels to achieve the selected width and height of the image. Recommended for hard-edged images 
in the simple graphics. The, this isn't really a simple graphic, but you can see the difference in uh, the 100% picture here on the left or on the right to, to the blow up and how much the, the, the smart size is able to manipulate the data and make it a little bit clearer. I don't really like manipulating any kind of photograph. I believe that is an aspect once you start doing that, you've taken away any of the detail that you possibly could have had. And, and I mean, like, uh, when I say uh, it's focusing to infinity, it does, it's limited to the amount of grains in the, uh, in the image it's captured. Now, back in the day, we call that silver halides. We had it in ISO uh, 100 would be a fine. Uh, they even went to a 50. Uh, there was a double zero. Uh, it was a special Kodak brand. I remember actually developing that film at one point. Yeah, very high, 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 fine, fine films. But now, now we're getting into 18 megapixels and stuff like that. So we can zoom right in and we can see things just normally. So you don't have to do any of this manipulation necessarily to zoom in on a picture and bring it up. On just the simplest program on on, on the computer since the 1990s, um, you could you could just blow up a picture of a high resolution uh, but my back in the 90s it would take you a long time to do it but nowadays it's zippity doo -dah. Uh most cameras right now are at least five megapixels That's, uh, i remember when i first started doing uh, aerial photography i was using a one meg or three megapixel so the smart size what does the smart size do so let's zoom in on this we're going to go to oh, we're up to 100 percent right there so the smart size what that does it chooses the best algorithm based on the new pixel dimensions you set so so you're going to set some uh, so when you set your size that you're setting it up here now when i did the size here all i did was uh resize and i just moved the decimal point over to do it 10 times larger so these pictures are 10 times larger at 75 dpi so they're quite a bit larger uh, in the aspect of dimensions uh, so but you can see the difference in the quality 10 times now we're going to go into your uh, by cubic they were talking about that they were also talking about smart size there by cubic it minimizes the jaggedness that often results from the expanded irregular or complex images so it, it, it'll it'll do that but um i know we go further into it and what each one does um if you resize it i'm just reading off of the actual menu what the uh, program uh, manufacturer suggests on this one here uh, when you resample an image uh, so it's talking about different rules and how you can do it but this is basic uh, knowledge on f any kind of photography you can only get so much detail out of anything so it's, it's, be it silver halides on the graininess little tiny specks inside of a film of how many little tiny specks you can fit in there uh, ISO 800 like big specs in the in the in the emulsion or or, or uh, you're looking at uh, maybe 20 uh, ISO which would be like oh just just like a very fine aluminum and just just like tons and tons of little tiny silver highlights not big chunks but the little ones they they have to turn over black or on or off right like binary film was binary itself too so we're getting a 10 times zoom uh, here so this is a bicubic and bicubic what it does um, and how does it resample with bicubic I don't really quite say I think it picks so bicubic Anyways, so we're going to go back into, we're going to zoom in onto the bicubic here. 100%.
And then here's the bilinear. Let's just choose another pixels there beside the other pixels. You notice that if I can zoom right in here, you don't get like pixels. It's all blended nicely. It's giving you a certain effect. And you'll see even on the edges of the green line what it's doing. It's kind of averaging it out. It's, it's giving it a little of a motion blur. Or sometimes they'll take other pixels from other pixels. Or they're going to add contrast somehow. An algorithm, all that algorithm is, it's a simple computer instruction to do something over and over again. Because these will have millions and millions of pixels, as we know, and it has to go through each one and choose and change it to make it uh, seem appear more smooth or more clear. It's an illusion. And now, when they start using illusions, you, you want to have, if anything, a, a raw file, even with jpegs each time you save them you lose data on each time it's a lossy uh, compression format it never never the same the first time around you, if you lose your master you lose your master they should know that um, 10 times zoom pixel clarity 10 times zoom weighted 10 times zoom bilinear so what do we get this one's kind of neat. The uh, 83, 91, 100%. This is 10 times zoom. So you give it an idea. If you've got a, oh, if it's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels, now it's it's 10,000 pixels by 10,000 pixels. It's just it's amazing on how 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 much you can zoom in. That is this, right? Uh, and then you got your 10 times zoom weighted. I go to one of my other programs here. So this is a, a picture I've taken and I, I've zoomed into it. These are mountains in the background. I'll show you what the picture actually looks like. But I just brought these up so you can see the difference in these zooms. Now this is zoomed at about 1500%. Now that's that's pretty pretty uh, zoomed in on there. And here's the one that's been manipulated and I've I manipulated it quite a bit and you can see how nice and sharp it looks but it's not real this one is more real of what the camera captured was able to capture this is a rendering that was done by a computer could have won uh, if you want a perfect rendering I'll paint it for you I'll make it even better you know and that's the question of it algorithm is just a computer program that does something over and over again to render these pixels so it's taking one of each one of these pixels and it's grabbing one next to it and it's blending the two to make it look a little bit nicer and great for photography horrible for quartz horrible for quartz if you're using any kind of pixel manipulation to show proof you're lying it just no lawyer should use that no 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 defense i can understand using footage from a crt camera or just somebody's video camera their phone but as soon as you put that through a program manipulator and you don't have the original data beside it even then it just you're manipulating whoever's viewing it it's an illusion just like all images are in the first place but now you're adding to the illusion you're painting your picture and an algorithm is just a computer painting the picture and it's just programmed to do certain uh, a sequence it's like um, if you ever did basic it's 10 10 equals and you put quotes and you put your name in there and then you put comma and then you only go 20 go to 10 and then you go 30 run and it'll just go back and forth and keep on printing or you put print in there right you gotta put print in there and it just keeps on printing the name over and over and over and over and over again that is an algorithm it's just a sequence here's a picture of the mountains and i'm just uh focused in on here at a thousand percent here's 2500 percent and you can see that there's even a line that's across here it's all pixelated right now and you can see that it's not perfect it's a it's just a rendering of the the best ability that the camera has of capturing light and organizing light 
and then you even have some manipulation when the file is compressed. Uh, even even that's using the, uh, the the coding to to make it large and small. So and, and compression and, and and saving just to save on time and stuff like that. This is the uh, how amazing that technology really is. So you could see how clear that looks from a distance. But if you're gonna if you're gonna zoom in and try to make this look like there's a mountain goat up there, you can see a mountain goat. You know you'll never ever be able to take this four pixels and make it look into a mountain goat, no matter how much science you use, no matter how much technology you've got, and no much no matter how much knowledge you have about technology. So we cannot make something from nothing. You can only manipulate it to smooth it out, to give it more pixels, to give it more less jaggedness, but it's not real. It's not close to original even. It's a it's a it's a depiction of what was before.